Hi. We begin today with a confession. I suffer from compulsive component condition. Victims of CCC are gluttons for game components. Yes, that's right. If there's a game with lavish artwork, thick cardboard, cards, and other neat little pieces, there's a really good chance it's going to end up on my game shelf. Even mediocre games are going to tempt me if they're filled with lots of molded plastic bits. Oh, curse you, Monopoly City. Curse you and your 80 little molded plastic buildings. Oh, can't stay mad at you guys. I love you all so much. But that's what this new series is all about. Taking a look at the pieces, the cards, and the iconography of games, and upgrading the lackluster components to make those games even more immersive. So join me and Pair of Dice Paradise as we present this new series, The Component Proponent. Saving your game from the mundane, the component proponent, yeah. So this episode will review four suggestions for upgrading the little paper coins that come with a lot of fantasy games. Each of these suggestions is going to be evaluated on three different criteria. Those being... One, thematic immersion. Thematic immersion means what? It means, in this case, how much the component draws you into the game. How much these coins make you feel like a swashbuckling pirate or a lord o' oh, water deep. We'll find out. Two, quality and options. Quality and options. How well made is the component? Is it going to fall apart after 30 minutes of gentle play? And also, what options are available? Colors, sizes, stuff like that. Three, price and value. And finally, a comparison of its price and value. Is the component cheap, but cheaply made? Is it expensive, but still cheaply made? Also, I'll take a look at how many of each component you could buy online if you had a budget of $100. We'll take a look at how much you get for your money. All right, so that's how I'm going to be making my comparisons. So let's take a look at each one and then come back here for my final analysis. Let's start with one of the most common alternatives to paper coins, poker chips. One of the advantages of poker chips is their availability. They're everywhere. Look, I found some right here. Let's see how poker chips stack up against our criteria. Oh yes, stacked up. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yes, that's very nice. One of the biggest downsides to using poker chips is they sacrifice theme for convenience. Somehow swashbuckling your way across the seven seas holding a handful of Vegas clay just doesn't seem quite right. Ahoy, matey. Personally, I prefer using poker chips as victory points. They work really well for games like Seasons and Small World. Only with open scoring! Yes, I was assuming open scoring for Small World. But as a proxy for gold coins, eh, not so much. Meh, eh, meh. <laughs> not so much. Another one of the advantages of poker chips is the great variety of materials, colors, and sizes, and denominations that they're available in. For this review, I'm going to be using my chip of choice, which is the Eclipse line. The Eclipse line is a mid-range chip. They're clay, as opposed to being made of plastic or ceramic. They have a sticker detail, uh, so the graphics aren't printed directly on the chip material itself. I believe they have a metal slug in the center, and the clay gives them a weight of about 14 grams, meaning they have a very satisfying, intimidating clunk when you drop them down on the table. While I was doing my research into poker chips, one of the only complaints that I heard about the Eclipse line or other chips with decals is that sometimes the decals can be off-center. And so people have to get out the, you know, the super glue and the tweezers to go in and actually remove the decal and reposition it and glue it back on. But, I mean, I didn't have that problem except maybe with one or two chips in the whole batch that I got. And I'm not going to be so anal retentive as to go in and spend a half hour repositioning two little decals on my chips. Yeah, I totally did. So there's poker chips. Good on price, great on quality, and not so great on theme. If you're looking for something with better theming, then the next suggestion might be it. There's a really large variety of plastic coins that are available, but during my research I kept coming across one manufactured by a company called the BT Group. 
So that's the one I'm going to be looking at in this review. If we're talking about games in a fantasy setting, then these will likely scratch that itch better than poker chips will. But there's just something about the lightweight pressed plastic coin feel that just leaves me wanting. On the other hand, lightweight can be a plus. Do you know how labor intensive it is to lug around 18 and a half pounds of poker chips? Oh man, and when you're forcing your six year old to load your games in the car, it's like three extra trips for them. Plastic coins are substantially easier for a toddler to tote. Now, I don't personally own any of these coins yet, so what I'm about to tell you may be even bigger lies than usual. The reviews ranged dramatically from loved it and unbeatable to horrendous and the paint peels off. With such mixed reviews, are these really worth trying? These plastic coins are actually the most affordable option on the list. I found a packet of 100 of them for $6 online. So the $100 budget that we're talking about would buy 1,500 coins. That's six and a half cents per piece. That's pretty affordable. So affordable, yes. But if the plastic coin isn't thematic enough for you still, then the next option on the list just might be the one for you. Okay, here's a neat one. Campaign coins are made by a company called King of the Castle Games Company in Australia. Their coins are actual metal, and they come in bronze, silver, gold, and platinum in a variety of shapes, sizes, and denominations. Sorry, just started to drool there for a minute. These coins are metal, so there's not going to be any flimsy plastic or paint to peel off with them. And each type and denomination of coin has its own unique design and shape. So if you're looking for a component to upgrade a fantasy game, it's just, it's not going to get much more immersive than this. So the Campaign Coins website mentions that some of the features of their coins are raised details and an antique finish. The coins look to be about the size of a U.S. quarter. And elsewhere on their website, they mention, it is our goal to make our coins as authentic as possible so that the money in your hand is exactly the same as the money in the game world. Except they're in Australia, so that was probably written in an Australian accent. So what about price and value? Well, for that, I'm just going to have to take their word for it. Because, see, I don't own any of these. Yet. For two years, I've had their site bookmarked with a bunch of coins in the cart on their website, ready to buy. And I just can't bring myself to do it. And why? Because of the price. With shipping included, our $100 budget would buy 110 coins. That's 91 cents per coin. For play money? Ugh, I just can't bring myself to do it. A friend of mine put it best when they looked at the coins, looked at the price, then looked at me and said, you know, for that price, why don't you just use real money? Hmm, indeed. Which brings me to option number four. All right, so if poker chips aren't thematic enough, plastic coins aren't high enough quality, and campaign coins are too expensive, what other alternatives are there? Well, the answer came to me one day when I was passing one of those bottle return machines that give out change in the form of these. These are Sacagawea US $1 gold coins. $1 gold coins? Aren't those just money? Well, figuratively speaking, yes. Okay, and literally speaking, also yes. But, at least to me, the $1 gold coin is actually so rarely seen in circulation, because no one seems to like it, that it doesn't distract, it doesn't pull you away from the game. In fact, before considering them as game components, I'd never actually encountered one in the wild. So as for quality? Well, if you are able to suspend your disbelief with these gold coins, then they should fit the bill pretty darn well, because that's what they are, gold coins. So what about price and value? Well, again, comparing apples to apples, shopping online, you can get 85 gold coins for our $100, $100 budget. Selling currency for higher than face value. I am in the wrong line of work. So, yeah, paying more than a dollar a piece for a one dollar coin does seem pretty ridiculous. Fortunately, if you get them in your change or from your local bank, 
you can rationalize to yourself that they're technically free. Because the nice thing about this component is that you can liquidate them. If you ever need some money, you can spend them. By comparison, try paying for a cheeseburger with poker chips. Hardly ever works. I will point out one potential downside to using $1 coins as game components. You're not going to use them with every gaming group. I mean, for example, no one wants to come home from a convention just to find out that $50 worth of legitimate currency found its way home with other players. So even with a cool factor this high, still going to be pretty discerning about which players you bring these out to the table with. So there you have it, four suggestions for upgrading paper coins to make them more thematic and immersive in our games. If you have any suggestions, let me know. I'd love to try them out. If nothing else, it's an excuse for me to get more fiddly bits for my own collection. So thanks for watching, and until next time, I'm Chaz Marler, your component proponent. Ahoy, matey.